Praise God. God is so good. Here it is Wednesday night, and it seems like we were just here for Sunday morning. And again, I just want to stop and just say this. I got so excited Sunday morning just looking out there at you all and praising and y'all blowing your horns and just, just lifting Jesus up. My goodness. And I told Pastor just a few minutes ago, I cannot wait to this coming Sunday because God has got something special from Pastor Joy that's going to just, them horns are going to be on all the time. And maybe, even maybe, that big horn might go off. Hallelujah. And praise God, I can't wait if it does. But anyway, we need to get into the message for tonight. And before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just take this time to say we love you. Yes. We thank you. We thank you for uh, teaching us and showing us how to live by your word, by the Holy Spirit, and by being obedient, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, I just thank you for what you've done in this church. I thank you for, for putting a pastor here that, that we become one. <clears throat> I thank you for him and his wife, and I pray blessings upon them. I thank you again for all the elders and their wives, and I pray special blessings on them. I thank you for all of our deacons and their wives, and I, and I pray blessings on them, Lord. And God, I just want to thank you for putting us all together that we come to worship you and only worship you. Yes, and God, that's our main goal. That's, our, that's what we're always going to do here is just worship you, Lord, and tell people about Jesus. God, we love you. Please open eyes and hearts and ears tonight that they hear your word the way you want it heard. And Lord, let them be obedient to do with this word that they hear from you and do what is right with it. God, again, I thank you that you give me the opportunity to come and bring Bring your word, Lord, and please, God, let everything be from you. Yes. Don't let nothing come out of this mouth again, Lord. It's not from you. I love you. We praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people again, amen. said amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. You know, God, I've been so tore up ever since Sunday morning. I have, I, and you heard me just praise that to God and thank God for Sunday morning. But when you get back to, to, to you all and get to preach to you all personally, even though you was in a car, it still was the best experience I've had for a long time. Because I miss everyone sitting in here. And even not even when I'm not preaching, I get to hug you and just fellowship with you. And I miss that. And I, I know you all miss that. But God spoke to me just the, the night before last. And he laid on my heart uh, this message for tonight. It's called The Three Voices of God. And I know you're sitting there thinking like I did. I said, God, you've only got one voice. You're the great. But he says, I've got three voices that you don't listen to sometimes. You need to listen to all three voices. And this is what the voices he told me were. Here, here's the first one. The Bible. <clears throat> That's God's word. That's God's word. He speaks through his word. And if we don't study and if we don't read his word, we're not going to hear from God. Because that's what he sent here for. So let's go to scripture. In uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, it says, All scripture, all means all, and that's all, all means. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God, which is us, may be complete Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Listen to me. God inspired every word in that Bible. Every word he inspired. And he used that, he uses that Bible to teach us. He uses his word to grow us. He uses his word to keep us straight. He uses his word to, to tell us about the Holy Spirit. He uses his word from day one. Listen, we have to take time to get in the Word and study it. We have to take time to spend time in God's Word. If we don't do that, you won't hear God's voice. I'm telling you, Pat, you will not hear God's voice if you do not spend time with God. Amen. You know, I know somebody said, well, maybe I don't read as good. Maybe I don't understand as good. If you truly understand the Holy Spirit, He will provide a book if it's just reading to you. He will provide CDs he will, yes. that's truly his, still His Word. So don't, you have no excuse. If you can't, and there's some that can't see to read, but they make things that you can. And so there's always God's word that comes out there. You have to be obedient whether you can see, whether you know how to read, whatever. You've got to get in God's word and you've got to study it. In Romans 12, 2, it says, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you want to know what God's will is, get in his word. If you want to truly know the true will of God, you've got to get in his word. You've got to study his word. You've got to listen to that word. And you've got to get into it if you want to know the true will of God. See, don't be conformed to this world. You know, I preached a little bit about that Sunday. Do not live in the world. Because when you go living in the world, God says, you're not with me. God created this world. And he created it perfect. And everything was wonderful until sin come in. And when sin come in, he says, now, don't live in this world. You physically got to be here. But your spiritual mind, your Holy Spirit that's living in you, everything about you, in Jesus' name, you've got to live through Christ, not by the world. Hallelujah. And that's what we got to understand. That's what we got to do. And you will not understand that until you get into God's Word. If you want to know God's will, read it. I promise you this. Uh, he never failed me yet. Every time that I've got in the Word and read it, and, and, and God's always shown me something different. I'm, I said this Sunday, even when I've done the prodigal son, and I've done it six different times and preached it six different times, Every time that I preach it, there's something new that the Holy Spirit shows me Hallelujah. through the Word. Every time, there's something different in there. So there's no other book. Listen to me, church. There's no other book that you can buy, that you can read, that you can study, that will show you something different every time in it. It's only God's Word. That's the only Word that is inspired, and it's inspired by God. All these other books is okay to read and study and understand. It's okay. But the only book that you need to live by is God's word, the Bible, the Holy Bible. Second Peter 3, 15 through 16 says, And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as all our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. Listen, God used Paul. He uses every person in that Bible that he inspired them. From the time of Adam and Eve. You know, Adam and Eve didn't have a Bible. Think about that a minute. They didn't have God's word. They had God. Amen. God was truly with them. <clears throat> when there was no sin here, he was walking with them. He talked with them. He loved them. He showed, He gave them everything, Pastor. Everything. He gave them all they ever needed. They had everything to God, for God, with God. Amen. Because they had God himself, his true word. And until sin come in, then God had to create his word through his people. See, think about it. Moses, he done wrong. But yet God changed him and then used him. And then, then you look at each and every one of them. Noah even messed up. Yes. You know, you can look at about everybody that God used in the word to, to, to create his Bible. He used all these men. And every one of them made a mistake. Every one of them messed up. Look at David. My goodness, I, I, when I read the book, uh, story of David from the time of Goliath till he was king until he messed up and, and cheated on his wife from all that, I read every bit of that. But God still used him to inspire his word in the Bible. Amen. Everything that he did, he wrote it in the God's word and God used it. Look at the book of Psalms. He wrote most of the book of Psalms. But he was inspired to God to write the book of Psalms. And he tells you in that book how, how forgiven that God is to David. How he forgave him. He cried out to God. How many times did we cry out to God? I cry out all the time, Pastor. And I know you do too. Amen. Even when I mess up and when I don't mess up, I still cry out to God. Because of his word, because of the Bible. And it also says in that same uh, passage, as also in all his apostles, speaking to in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught, unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. We cannot take anything and add to that Bible. Amen. Listen, man will try to add, man will try to twist. That's all Satan. Yep. The Bible is inspired by God and it's so easy to understand it. But first thing you got to do is get into to, to prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you need out of that word. Because see, a lot of times, even, even in my past, a lot of times I want to read the thing that's good for me. But when there's something there that's telling me to change, there's something there to tell me to do something different, I don't like that. I don't like that. 
So I'm twisting the scriptures to make it fit me. That's wrong. Quit, quit twisting them scriptures. God inspired it. You read it. You live by it. You know what I love about the Bible? It tells you how to eat. It tells you how to keep healthy. It tells you, listen, it even tells you how you have a long life here on earth. You honor your mother and father, the Bible says, and you, you will have a long life. You trust in God. You do what the Bible says, and he will, he will let you live till he's ready to blow that trumpet. And I can't wait for that. I really believe it with all my heart. I really believe me and Pastor is going to be here and that trumpet is going to go Amen. off and we're going to be living in this earth but we're going to be gone just in a matter of a twinkle of an eye. Woo! That's what the Word said. Listen, how can you not read God's Word? How can you not hear the voice of God telling about His Word in the Bible? How can you not? It's dangerous not to live by the Word of God and study His Word. It's dangerous. I want all of God's blessings. I want all of God's blessings. And if I get all of God's blessings, I've got to get in His Word. I can't learn about His blessings on my own. Amen. That's why He inspired. That's why He put this Word out. That's why He expects us to study that and understand that Word. Let's do it. 2 Peter 1, 20-21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. Think about that. When, when we prophesy, even us today can prophesy, it's got to be from God. Amen. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I said that just a few minutes ago. Moses, every one of them was inspired by the Holy Spirit by God. That's how they moved. That's how they was able to write in Scripture what needed to be wrote. That's how David wrote half of the Psalms. Because he was inspired, he was, he was, the Holy Spirit inspired him. God inspired him because God was the Holy Spirit then. I know Jesus wasn't walking the earth here, but God was the Holy Spirit then. Hallelujah. So we got to understand that. We got to believe that. We got to, we got to respect that. The Bible. Remember, the Bible is first voice of God. Second, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Holy Spirit. That, that is the second voice of God. Listen to me. Scriptures. Listen to the words of this. John 16, 7 through 8 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. This is Jesus talking now. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. My goodness. Listen to me. Jesus came on this earth, walked this earth. He'd done miracles upon miracles upon miracles. And the main reason he was sent here is to die for each and every one of us. Amen. To die for our stupid sins. He never sinned. But he took all of our sins and took them all upon him. And he died on that cross. And listen, the minute that he passed away, the minute that the Holy Spirit that died, and he died and the Holy Spirit came, the minute then that, that bell was torn. And then that was the new covenant. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. The minute that happened, Jesus came back and he, on the third day and he rose and he said, he said, listen to me. I got to go to the Father. And if I don't go to the Father, you can't have me. He had to go to the Father. He had to leave. He had to go to the Father. And then he says, when I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit. I will send you the comfort. That's the second voice of God. Woo, that is. That's the second voice of God. The first is the Bible. That's his living word. That's what he tells you. Then he had to send his son because of the old covenant. It wasn't going to hold up. He had to send the new covenant, which is his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when he sent his new covenant, which is Jesus, he says, now you have the Holy Spirit. Lord. Now you, he lives in you if you truly are saved and you ask him. Praise the Lord. Lord. And then that same scripture goes on and says, and when he has come, Woo, I love this. When, when you have asked him to come into you and live in you, he says, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Yes. Praise God. That's why the Holy Spirit's here. It's, it's always to keep us in line. It's always to keep us straight. It's always it's us Christians. It's, it's the only way we can get saved is ask Jesus in our life and then the Holy Spirit guides our every step if we allow him and not, not hence the Spirit or quench the Spirit. John 16, 13 says, However, when he, talking to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, 
He will guide you into all truth. <laughs> Listen, all means all again, all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. And also, John 16, 14 through 15 says, He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. I'm telling you, everything that, that, that Jesus had, he's giving it to you right now. Amen. All you've got to do is accept him. The Holy Spirit comes and he lives in you. He says, all I have is the Father's. And the Father has given it all to me. And woo, listen to me. All that he's got, he has given to us. Hallelujah. I mean, we've got the same power that Jesus did. We can do the same things that Jesus did. And the word, if you get into the word of the voice of God, the first one, it also says, greater things you will do than Jesus did. Amen. How much greater can we do than that? I mean, that's, that's the limit. That's the limit, Pastor. That is the limit. we got everything that Jesus can do, we can do greater. And he expects us to be obedient, to get in his word, the first voice, and then the second voice, live by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide and direct you. Also, in 1 Corinthians 2.10, it says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Spirit, listen, read, listen, I'm going to say that again. It just touches me. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. There's some, there's some things that, that we don't even understand. Yes. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit will pray for you when you can't. Amen. The Word says it. Get back to the Word. The Bible tells me that the, He is out praying for me. When I can't pray, when I don't understand, when I don't know what's... The Holy Spirit's praying for me. He's, see, he's reaching out further than we can even imagine. He's reaching out further than we can even think. There's times that we don't even know how to, to pray. Maybe some kind of tragedy is happening in your life. Maybe something's going on. The Holy Spirit is praying for you right then. Maybe there's times that you don't know even what to do. You, you, you say, God, I don't even know how to pray. Guess what? The Holy Spirit's already praying. He's already interceding for you. He's already going to the Jesus. He's already praying to the Father. Because let me tell you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And they all work together to make them one. And that's what He expects us to do. we got to come together as one in this church, in this community, and reach out to everybody and tell them about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, about the Bible. There's people who don't even understand and know that. We think it's so easy. Why, why don't they know? Because we're not doing it. We're not doing our job. We're not doing our work. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, But the natural man, that's the natural man, that's the man that don't know Jesus, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me tell you something. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything I'm telling you, you don't even understand it. Amen. You do not even understand it. Because you cannot receive the Holy Spirit unless you get into the God's Word and understand it and ask Jesus Christ in your, in your self. Ask Him to come into you. And the minute that you do that, that's when I said it earlier, that's when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. And if you are a natural man of this world, it's not going to happen. Yes, that door, you've been knocked on all the time. Holy Spirit tries to knock on that door to get you to answer but if you're foolish and you want to live into the world and you don't have time for God and you don't even want to hear about God, guess what? You're not going to be there. That's, scary. That's a scary thought. With all this coronavirus crap going on right now, you might be just like it gone. You're destined for hell. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't study your word and ask Jesus to come into your life and you don't have him in your life and you take that last breath, that next breath is going to be in hell. It will, Pastor. Amen. That, and, I, and that hurts me to even think that someone does not is denying Jesus. That hurts me. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. You know, I love that. Pastor, I, you know, Sunday, I, I preached on the prodigal son again, I, as I said earlier. I preached on the prodigal son. The prodigal son... He inherited everything 
his part that was coming to him from his father. Well, let me tell you, he took it and he wasted it all. Well, let me tell you about an inheritance that never can be wasted. There's an inheritance right here, the mind of Christ. That Jesus says, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you all the inheritance that the Father gave me. And this is all for you. And the, the heritage is to, to honor me, to love me, and to serve me. I will provide for your clothes, your food. I will, I will provide your children. I will take care of all your needs and wants. This is the total inheritance from Jesus Christ. From, from the Father to Him, to the Holy Spirit, to us. That if we just take that inheritance, we cannot lose it. The Bible tells me there's nothing that can snatch that out of your hand. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I know there's been things said about uh, what, if, what if somebody takes their life? If they know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, I promise you right now, they cannot be snatched out of Amen. God's hand. They cannot be snatched out of God's hand. Amen. There's no way if they truly know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Glory. Don't let anybody kid you. Don't let anybody try to tell you that you can lose your salvation. On, because why did Jesus, is he going to get on the cross every day? No. Oh. He had to do it one time, one time only. Oh, so he, you never lose that salvation if you truly ask Jesus Christ in your life. You've got an inheritance through the Holy Spirit that you'll never lose. The third voice of God. Obedience. Let me say, this is a very important one. And I know the, the Word of God is very important. The, the Holy Spirit of God is very important. But if we don't be obedient to do with what the Word says and to do with what the Holy Spirit tells us, then it don't matter about Amen. them too. It doesn't matter, Pastor. Amen. If we're not obedient to, to listen to God, read God's Word, and live by it, and if we're not obedient to let Holy Spirit guide our every step and not, not do it, then it don't amount to nothing. And that's God's third voice. He's saying, listen, study your Word. Get into the Word that I inspired. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Now all I want you to do is do the work that I've called you to do. That's to reach out and tell people about me. That I'm getting ready to come back pretty soon. This trumpet is getting ready to sound. That horn is getting ready to blow. And I'm going to take my people that knows me, that does my three voices, that listens to my three voices. I'm getting ready to take them out of here. And as as Pastor said earlier, listen to me. When that happens, it's going to be more chaos than any kind of coronavirus. It's going to be more chaos. There's going to be people... Cars running at each other. There's going to be airplanes just falling. There's going to be things just happening. I mean, there's no ex explanation except one. We're going to be with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be with Jesus, and I can't wait to that day. Be obedient. Be obedient. In 1 John 4, 19, it says, We love him. Listen to me. This is very important. To be obedient. We love him because he loved us first. Amen. He first loved us. Now he expects us to love him. Not only that, we've got to love our brothers and our sisters. We're going to get into that. In Matthew, Matthew 22, 36, it says, Teacher, I love this, which is the great commandment in the law? I'm going to stop there just a minute. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something that happened a while back. Now, I've shared this before, and Pastor shared it too. But me and Pastor sat in that office when we first... Uh, was talking him being a pastor and we knew right then that we truly wanted the same thing and that was just to worship you Jesus Hallelujah. that's all we wanted to worship you but pastor got up here and preached one Sunday and never will forget it and he preached something that that I was never preached to before so I, I really listened to the Holy Spirit I, I listened to pastor but I'm gonna tell you I always listen to the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. and I listened to the Holy Spirit as he was teaching this and he talked more than one time he told that there was an old law and there was the Ten Commandments by Moses. He taught this. And he says, that was for them. And it was. It was for Moses' time period. But it didn't, it didn't really work because everything was still chaos. Just like when he come down with Moses come down the mountain, they were still living in sin. They were doing everything completely awful. So Jesus, God finally knew that he was going to have to send his son Jesus. He finally, he knew. He knew from the very beginning of time. But he still just gave us all a free will and a chance. But he knew that the Ten Commandments wasn't going to be kept. Amen. 
Pastor, he knew it. So he had to send his son Jesus down here to walk this earth, to walk around and heal people and do good. <clears throat> but he knew the real reason he sent him. And that was to take all of our sins and put them on that cross, nail them to that old rugged cross. Took all that beating, that spit upon, that cursing, everything you could possibly imagine, plus for us. And again, as I said earlier, the minute he took his last breath, that veil was torn. The new covenant, the new covenant, wiped away the old covenant. And the Holy Spirit showed me when Pastor was preaching that. I've never heard it preached that way before. But he showed that to me, that there was a new covenant. And that new covenant was Jesus Christ. And that's the new commandment. It took care of the old commandments. Because he tried it first. God put it out there first. Before Jesus come here. But he knew that it wasn't going to work. So then he had to send his son. But the scripture says again, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And this is what it is. Matthew 22, 37, it says, Jesus said to him, I love this, Jesus said to him, you, me, shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then, I want to go on to this one. He, he's not done. Matthew 22, 38 through 40 says, this is the first and great commandment. And the second, listen to me, church, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two, not ten. He didn't say not to kill, not to steal, not to have adultery, not to put anything before. He said the first one, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second one, you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments. Hang them, all the law and the prophets. Listen to me. If you truly believe what this says, the first and the second takes care of all the ten. Amen. It wipes them away. The first and the second wipe away. So the first commandment is to love God first. Put Him first in everything you do. The second one is to love someone that stabbed you in the back. It's to love someone that called you a bad name. It's to love someone that stole from you. It's to love someone that's done you wrong and still doing you wrong today. It's to love your neighbor. And that's sometimes who your neighbor is. You put God first and you put your neighbor, you love him no matter what he's done to you. And he says, then that's taking care of all of them. Church, the Holy Spirit has talked to me so much since Pastor's been here of bringing, letting the Holy Spirit guide his heart. Because <clears throat> I know he's not, he's not able, he's like me, he's not even smart enough to bring the word without the Holy Spirit doing Amen. it. And neither one of us can. And I, I know that with all my heart. But let me tell you, when we listen, when we truly listen to, to the three voices of God, <clears throat> the first one, the Bible, the second voice, when he's telling you to listen to the Holy Spirit, and the third voice is be obedient. If we do all three of these, we will get blessings upon blessings upon Amen. blessings. Amen. He's got them there to pour out on us. We've all been blessed. We've all said that through all this big going on right now. We've all been blessed. We've all been healthy. We've all been taken care of. But listen, get in your word. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Then be obedient to what God tells you to do. There's some people out there right now listening to me. They're right now listening to me. That God's telling you to do something and you're running from it. Quit running. Amen. Be obedient. And listen to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in me, Lord. Please help me each and every day to, to listen to him. And, but not only that, but be obedient yes, to do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do, Lord. And God, I just praise you. I thank you again for a time tonight, Lord, that I take this time to come and just share your word that you shared with me to everybody that's listening. Bless them, put your loving arms around them, and just let them feel your presence right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And again, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Love you, church. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus.